So, welcome to Big Stack Small Workshop. This is our podcast. What is it? Big ideas. All right. All yeah. Right. So today I have Chad with me, fish glass, and I'm going to check the setting. Chad, why don't you tell them a little bit about? Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Oh my goodness. This is all our, right. Um, I mean, I'm just a fellow a fellow materials guy. Like I love woodworking, wood turning, um, case construction, um, sculpting. I enjoy metalwork. I enjoy everything from fabrication to metal spinning to to blacksmithing to yeah, just about just run the gamut. I've worked in a bunch of different fields that have allowed me the opportunity to to pick up on a lot of different materials, and I really feel like that's the best way uh, to learn. Um, if you it's just being able to immerse yourself into a trade. So I mean, going to school is great, and taking classes is great. Um, of course, I did all this whenever I was much younger, and like obviously now I have kids and adult responsibilities, and yeah, can't quite fly by this even my pants and be as a uh, uh, vagabond esque as I would like, but you know, yeah, still still like to play around. So that's awesome, man. Now you let's let's pick um, let's pick uh, glass blowing. How okay. did you get into glass blowing? How did I get into glass blowing? Absolutely. All right. Or glass so, in general as a medium. Because there's more than blowing, right? There is. Yeah, I started off in a torch. Um, I was a friend of mine for for, uh, for a birthday present. I paid for a class for me to take like a six-hour bead-making class at one of the local glass shops. And I was hooked. This was back in 1997 and um, hadn't experienced anything like it before and just fell in love with the material and did it. Constantly before before work, after work, before class, after class, um, and couldn't get enough of the stuff. And uh, in '99, I was able to get in to the apprenticeship program at Jamestown. And again, this all comes back to that whole immersion therapy, where it's like I did the apprenticeship and was there for about six years, and just absolutely loved it. So now, so. when you say Jamestown, you mean like colonial? Like yeah, like I was I was there in the stockings and the garb and the flowy white <laughs> shirt and the whole nine yards, man. It was it was quite a quite a quite a quite a fun time. That, so. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You learned how to deal with um, some very sarcastic comments, and you <laughs> learned to return that with a smile. So yeah, it was, it was good stuff. But um. That's great, man. One of my, one of, um, Roy Underhill. Yeah. Roy uh, Underhill definitely. started there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, huge fan. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, that was an obsession as a child, even, was, was watching Royal Underhill. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, Woodwright Shop. And, yeah. Yeah. And turning that, that uh, water wheel in the intro. And, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> and walking with his dog. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. He'd, yeah. He'd be in traffic, <laughs> and they'd be like, let's get away from the, the hustle and bustle yeah. of life. And then the... Next walk through know. the stream yeah there he is yeah, yeah. so good yeah. stuff yeah. yeah so look i'm going to start with some questions for you okay um and we're, we're going to get this discussion started and then if anyone else has questions we're going to have them ch chime in uh after that so let's just talk about shops in general because you okay. do metal working you do woodworking you do all kinds of stuff yeah. anything you can get your hands on what are the three most important tools for any small shop you feel for any, well, again, it's going to come down to what you're trying to produce. Um, but I mean, I would say keep it basic. But if you're, if you're, you know, if you're a woodworker, a bandsaw is going to be like your number one tool. Um, the versatility, putting up a fence, learning how to resaw, um, cutting pattern work out, uh, just your variations on blades. So you can do aluminum, you can cut plastics, you can. I mean, really, to me, the, the bandsaw, obviously you're limited in the width of your cut, but um, just, I, th I think that's one tool people should, should work towards investing in and learning how to use right off the bat. I know a lot of people would say probably chop saw um, or a, a sliding miter saw really would be a better way to go versus just a plain chop saw. Um, you know, and again, uh, trying to think. I mean, I'm obsessed with lathe, turn, lathe turning. I've been on the lathe for years, and um, that's another another addiction that I warn people about. Uh, once you once you start, yeah, you're you, you go you go in real quick, you know. But the same thing there, like keep it simple, you know. Get a small mini, um, you know, or a mid lathe. Don't worry about you know. Or head out to Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. People are even. I've even there's even been lathes that'll end up at at thrift stores if you're not you know if you don't know what's happening all of a sudden you're like what is this tool and you know 
get it for relatively cheap. Um, go to Harbor Freight, get yourself a, a set of tools. Um, you have to resharpen them with a certain amount of frequency, but uh, still they serve their purpose, you know. Um, you know, metalworking grinders are your best friend. Uh, you know, you probably get try to get a couple um, cheap four and a half inch grinders. That way you're not constantly switching out between polishing, grinding, flap wheels, cutoff wheels. Um, it's pretty amazing what you can do with a, with even with a grinder when it comes to metal work. Um, cutting metal, I, I use a horizontal cutting bandsaw a lot, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't just get a plain 14 inch abrasive cutoff saw. And I mean, that's all that I used for years and still get reasonably accurate cuts and, and you know, it does real well. And you, again, you can pick those up fairly cheap. So, so is it like when you say the, uh, the abrasive, the, what was it? Abrasive wheel saw? Is that almost like a miter saw, but it's, it's mainly, but it's Co mainly for metal cutting. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's no, the, no, it's you're the good. Same, same thing. In fact, you could probably even find, um, uh, and I don't know how it would affect your miter saw necessarily, but you could probably get an abrasive, cutoff wheel for metal that you could put on your, if the arbor's the same, that would work, you know, as well. So, so your three tools are bandsaw? Bandsaw, definitely number one for, for woodwork. For woodwork, yeah. okay. And but the, just general purpose shop saw, shop tool, I think is a great tool. Yeah, you can cut aluminum with it as yeah, well, Yeah, that's right? what I'm saying. Put a bimetal bandsaw blade on and go to town. You could cut all, all kinds of aluminum shapes, you know, you can have a lot of fun. Now, can you cut metal with a regular bandsaw? You can. So you can cut metal, you can cut steel, you can cut brass, you can cut copper. Be careful with the thinner metals because they'll want to tend to grab a little bit, but you can take your time, go nice and slow. I, I cut a lot of copper, uh, copper sheet. I'll do fold forming projects and lay out a pattern and then and then cut that pattern using a bandsaw and a bimetal bandsaw blade. So, you know, yeah, a great tool to have in the shop. Awesome. And then your your second one was the lathe. Well, if if you if you go down that road, if you dare to venture down that road, um, but it doesn't have to be like people get nervous and they're thinking in terms of like price and space and what can I do and and really it doesn't require a lot of space. You know that's why I said start out with a, a little mini lathe. Um, and you're you're turning you know ten eighteen something like that ten inches in diameter by eighteen inches wide you're not talking a massive piece of wood you know do spindle work you know get familiar with the tools and I mean now just where we're sitting here there's some other guy that's sitting on the other side of a camera somewhere else that's that's spewing an insane amount of knowledge about <laughs> lathes right now and and it's worth listening to so um, you know definitely definitely this it's an amazing resource that wasn't really there um, when we got started no, so no. you know we were we were busy buying books and reading through books and and taking classes at local or going to guilds i mean wow if you yeah. really want to um to to find out if you're if it's something you want to do two seconds in a search engine and look up your local guilds woodworkers guild wood turners guild blacksmiths guild i mean glass even glass there's glass guilds we've got a local glass guild here you know, you'll find that they'll do demonstrations. Um, a lot of times they'll do monthly meetings, but you don't have to be a member to go to the meetings, you know? So it's, it's definitely worth checking out. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, I, I know you were the one that taught me into going um, and taking the wood turning class. Oh yeah. yeah we took it yeah. at Woodcraft. Um, you had taken it and then I, I had some tools that someone had given me. They said they were their grandfather's tools or their uncle, I think their uncle's tools. And they said, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know what these are, and they gave them to me. And I said, what are these? And I did a little research, and now they're wood turning tools. This is cool, because I did a lot of woodworking. Mine was primarily with the table saw and um, stuff like that. Um, but uh, I, I ended up taking the class, and, and you know what? Screw screw you, buddy, because, <laughs> <laughs> because it, I, I, yeah. it, after I took the class, I went out and bought the lathe, and then it's it is an addiction, yeah. Yeah, right? I, I'll, I'll be your pusher, man. I'm cool with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's not, not a bad thing to be pushing. So. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, it was it, the lathe. I, I probably ended up spending $1,500 in those first couple months on just... You, the lathe was yeah. probably half that cost, and then I just bought more and more uh, tools and chucks and anything. Yeah, yeah. It it can happen, it, but it doesn't have to. Like I, I will admit, I have I have a broad range of lathe tools that I like to use, but I will two. I've got two sets. 
in one set, I will completely and totally um, I, I don't mind grinding them down to a you know, again, I didn't, I did I don't have a lot invested. If it gives me kind of a unique cut or, you know, you'll start to learn this process. But I mean, if you look at the rake or the edge of a lathe tool and you, so, but. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, That's awesome. And I said, screw you because you know, oh, I totally it's been a lot of money. <laughs> I, 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 I have apologized to a lot of people <laughs> in, in the past for, for, yeah. No. Right. I mean, the enjoyment, the fulfillment you get out of. Work. Yeah. And it's instantaneous gratification. Yes. That's, that's the upside to it. Where if you're building, even if you're starting off small, building something like a birdhouse, right? And so you, you've got six pieces of wood and a, and a dowel. You still have to make those pieces and then glue them and attach them and, and wait for this whole process. Where lathe, as soon as you put that piece of wood in a chuck and it comes in contact with the tool, the shape just can instantaneously flow. And it, and it really is gratifying just getting hit in the face over and over again with a bunch of wood shavings. Kind of. Anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. No, it's it's once once a, once you touch the tool to that wood the first time and you yeah. get it, you get it to do it right because it does take some practice to, to get it right. Yeah. Once you get it right and you see curls fly off of the wood, you get this big smile on your face and it is just unbelievable. It's just it's total satisfaction. Like you said, immediate gratification. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the, the interesting thing too, if there's not an age, there's there's really isn't an age gap for this. So like I have a ten year old daughter, right? And when she was probably seven or eight, I had gotten her on the lathe. Like, you know, put a milk crate underneath of her, get it up and stand behind her, make sure like nothing crazy is getting ready to happen. But she could still sit there and make shavings and, and you know, and, and be safe about it. You know, yeah. safety classes, obviously, face shield, you know, we're, we're, we're watching out for our kids. But, you know, it's a neat experience for them. So and they have developed an appreciation for, for what you do. So. And then the third tool you said, was that the cutoff wheel or was it the angle grinder? Well, or was it? If you're, if you're working metal, I mean, I... I you know, the obsession there becomes things like angle grinders because you're just, you can, you don't want to have to sit around and change out discs and grinding wheels and polishing. It all depends on what you're doing, really. Um, you know, I mean, get yourself a nice, get get a little 110 MIG welder. Um, you can buy those all day long, either on Amazon or find them secondhand, or even if you want to spend, you know, four to $600 at Home Depot. Um, at Home Depot, Century Century Machine, which is a Lincoln product, um, they've got a little inverter MIG uh, that'll that I can't remember what it is, but it might be like maybe two hundred and fifty dollars, and it's a great little welder. I mean, it'll put put a, it'll put most metal together. You're not working thick metal, but if you're cutting tubing, you know, um, it's it's. So let's say there's someone out there that says I'm already a woodworker, and I'm interested in a few other. Things that have caught my eyes, maybe it's metalworking, maybe it's leather, um, but they, you know, some type of other medium that they're, they're interested in working with. But they say, you know, I'm already a woodworker. I don't have the time. What would you suggest? Broad. It's such a broad material. Um, if they're doing like case construction, like they're, they're, they're a cabinet maker, um, furniture is a really natural transition, I think. I mean, it, you're already working with high tolerances. Um, you, if you're working with veneers or if you're, um, you're just, you're, you're used to that higher level of accuracy. I think, I think from a transition from casework to, to furniture work, um, chairs, tables, keep it, you know, relatively simple, um, you know, but I, I think that's a good transition right there. Yeah. Uh, and again, that doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be anything large. I mean, you could, you can do an end table, you can do, um, I mean, there's just some real basic stuff you can do in a very small space and still come up with, you know, something that you're very proud of that you're, that you're excited about, you know, either giving to somebody you care about or selling it or passing it down to the next generation. So, and they'll be proud of it, hopefully. They don't what, say, yeah. No. What if they wanted to transfer to like another media that like, um, oh, like, I mean, well, like, where did you start? What was your very first thing that you probably started with? I mean, as a, as a, I want to say as a kid. And when I mean kid, I mean, like, 14, 15, 16 years old. Um, I was, I was a speaker head. I mean, I love building speaker boxes. Oh, yeah. And it's like, so, I mean, honestly, just cutting plywood with a, with a old Black & Decker 
circular saw that was, that was my dad's. And, um, you know, he did some woodwork and he later on in life, he really ended up doing a lot of woodwork and really kind of fell in love with it. Um, but he would be my, wood would have been where I started. It was my, it was, I was very crude. Um, I wasn't in any way, you know, I was still piecing together stuff. I mean, even, even into my early adulthood, you know, I would have a Rubbermaid tub that would be filled with tools that I, that I bought from whatever Ollie's big lots found something on clearance, hit a, hit a flea market. I mean, they, you know, they weren't, it wasn't necessarily good tools, but it did the job. And that, and that really, that's, it's still super gratifying and that's, what's important. You don't have to spend a ton of money, um, to, to, to be able to enjoy a material, you know, and the materials are relatively cheap. Like you can, you can fall in love with working with all kinds of crazy exotics that are getting imported and that, you know, rainforest devastation, whatever. Um, or you can get locally, you know, locally harvested lumber that's either from tree falls or dead falls. Whenever in this area, if we have a hurricane, but, um, it used to be pretty bad about driving around and like being like, oh, well, there's, you know, there's maple, there's an ash, there's sign <laughs> in the back, you know, I mean, I would, I would, you know, get it and, and come back, cut it in half, cut out the, try to cut out the pith of the wood. So that way it doesn't split so bad. And whatever I had, if I had paint laying around, I'd hit it with paint. If I had Elmer's glue or it didn't matter, something to seal the wood so it doesn't crack super bad. And then, and then just tuck it away. So I know it sounds horrible. No, you you were what, describing my life. You yeah, described this, exactly this is, what I did. This, this is what you do. Yeah, yeah, you're like, well, that's free. Yes. And I have this bucket of paint that I'm probably yeah. never going to use, and it seals the wood, and it allows the moisture to slowly escape, so it doesn't split and crack to pieces. And then tuck it in a corner, and maybe a year later. Um, you end up using it for firewood in your outside, you know, fire pit, or you might actually turn it into something really nice. So it just, it just really depends, but either way, it didn't cost you anything. You so, took me back, man. You took yeah, me back. But that's, that. that's what, I mean, yeah, that's it. Like, I, you know, I, I feel, I hate hurricanes, but man, it's a good source of wood. Um, yeah. 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 Or get to know a tree service, you know, yeah. a lot of tree services. Now uh, you're finding guys that, are, are sort of doing um, a dual entity where they're cutting trees down and then they're milling it. They're, they've got, you know, they're running, they're running band saws and they're, they're cutting stock. Um, you know, we had a, a guy local, he sort of transitioned over to CNC machines. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, you know, but that's, it really, you know, you just have to be a little bit crafty, you know, and, and, and figure out, you know, what works best for you. So you see that fault. You see those, um, that turning stock over there I do. Spalted. that so that came from a maple that i picked up and i got lazy and i kind of left it outside for a while and then i finally said well i'm, I'm going to do something about it now and i cut it up and like hand split it on my table saw and um but when, as i noticed that I was splitting it it was spalting and i was like man uh, I, I i'll look it. out <laughs> yeah i love it it's just pretty it's yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it makes for really beautiful wood yeah, yeah. and if it's super gratifying you know yes yeah it is you're going from from pretty much from start to finish with mm -hmm. with a project which is really cool so uh you know you talk about tools and you you, you talked about uh going to like some of the discount places or um flea markets or i'm sure you yeah. have yard sales and and um estate sales um but I, I got a question how much if someone asked you how much money should i be spending on my tools should i buy the best of the best you, sh you shouldn't buy the best of the best necessarily, but you have to ask yourself, how much am I going to be using this tool? And, and really, and it's also going to come down to accuracy. And I'm, I'm not saying that there is a direct correlation, but there is sort of a direct correlation between the accuracy that you're going to get from your tools um, by investing a little bit of money. You know, it doesn't have to be top of the line. Your saw, if you need to get a table saw, I mean, there are so many old craftsmen, um, cast iron top table saws that you'll see for $150, $200, great table saws, you know? Um, they're a belt-driven, you know, saw. You need to, you, you're probably going to have to clean a lot of rust off, but um, change out your belts to a, to a V-groove belt, maybe change your pulleys out, and you've got a saw that's going to last you for years on end. Um, and again, not a whole lot invested. It's, it, it's a comparable to a lot of new saws, um, and you can work good size, um, 
I mean, if you're working with sheet sheet goods like plywood, cutting three quarter inch plywood, you've got a broad, stable surface with with you know plenty of push behind it. So, yeah, um, you know, but definitely, definitely, that's it. If you have, if there's a, a tool that you that you know that you're like, this is I've got to use this once a year, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'll go I'll go to Harbor Freight or Northern and get a pair of um, mechanical or, or uh, nippers or, or or shears you know just it looks like essentially like a hand drill but it cuts through um sheet metal and you, you know it's it's it'll it'll work just fine does me does me you know does me just fine so once a year christmas time i cut out a bunch of christmas trees out of copper or whatever and do you really yeah oh that's yeah. awesome man so you know it'll, it'll rough it out and then i take it to the bandsaw and then i do the rest of the bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> but, awesome but yeah you know, where do you find copper sheeting? There is a roofing supplier over in Norfolk that you can get large, like, uh, like flashing, flashing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's two feet by eight foot rolls. Okay. So you're, so, you know, you can go on, if you just need a little bit, I mean, you can get copper at a broad range of places nowadays with, with eBay. If you just need small copper sheeting, yeah, yeah. It, but if you need large copper sheeting, yeah, look for alternatives. Like this is this is another interesting thing about working with a bunch of different materials is you kind of have insight to to all these other fields. So like your crossover tools, crossover materials, crossover suppliers all the time. Where you know you might be a woodworker and you're like, I never really thought about looking there for that tool, and it's right there. You know, so a lot of your local, um, like if you're a machine shop, machine suppliers, um, if you're like I said, that's roofing. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a big company, but um, but they sell they sell the the copper flashing and, and and it's a whole lot cheaper. It's a big investment. You have to pay a lot up front, but if you were to buy a little piece after little piece, you would end up paying ten times as much. So that's a good point, man. Yeah. That's a very good point. I, and it, some sometimes there is situations where, like, let's say you're a woodworker and you did want to. Um, I, I know. I, I, I've been a woodworker for many years, and I wanted to make um, a pie safe and a yeah. punch a punch tin or a punch copper yeah, cover yeah, would yeah. look like oh, perfect. fantastic yeah. against like if you get punch copper and walnut. You know, yeah, something like that would look amazing. Get those nice warm tones going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. or even oak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something, something like that's really really cool. Um, yeah, I you know I never now you got me thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you need large sheet copper, don't go to your average hardware store just just look around you know don't be afraid to call you know it, that again it's just it's a couple minutes on the internet and just think out of the box and and see what happens yeah so. awesome man so what sets a professional artist apart from someone that wants to be an artist um that's a tough question uh, i don't consider myself a professional artist um at one point i would have said i was kind of sitting on the line uh, but now, now I have a regular 40, um, and, and that's, but it, that doesn't mean at some point in time, I wouldn't go back to being a professional artist. I, it, there's a certain drive, uh, in a professional artist and a, a sense of risk, uh, to some degree, but, um, I guess just somebody who's making a living at being an artist really would make them a professional artist. So if they're, if they're able to, no matter what the material is that they're working in, or um, what the craft. I mean, I, I consider myself a crafter. I find I prefer the craft and the art, I guess, versus the art and the craft. Um, but it's all semantics. I mean, you know, yeah. We're artists and craftsmen have an aesthetic, and I for aesthetics. And whether you, it just depends on, you know, line, form, shape, and then the material. Um, but for the artist, it's, it's, it's if you're making a living, making art, you know. Air to dream. I mean, anybody out there who wants to do it, they can. I, man, I really hope that you do. It's, it's. I mean, for 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 a short lived of a run as I had, um, I would love to go back to it at some point in life. So, yeah. I would say you you're still somewhat of a professional artist. I mean, if you're you you, you do some. Um, do you still take side jobs, though? I do. Yeah. 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 Um, and it depends on what it is. I mean, if you're, you're building boxes, I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, there's an art to that, but it's it's there's a line there, but I think when you, you have to get creative and you, you, you have to like, 
you know, figure out a way to make something aesthetic and functional or just aesthetic or whatever. I think that's, yeah. if you're getting paid to do it, that's, that's true. That's the start of it's living true. the dream for it's a true. lot of people. It's true. You know, it is true. And, and what I say is I play support staff. Like I, I play a support role for other artists. So a lot of times an artist who might work in one material as a way that they want something to be displayed. So I might be making an armature for them or, or a pedestal for them. And, and it might not necessarily just be a plain box, but you're right. But, in, but for me personally right now, I feel like I play more of a support role uh, for other artists. And, and, and I love that too, because there's, there's fellowship that goes into that. And there's, there's ideas that go into that. And, and I want to help, um, I want to help their ideas come to fruition, you know, just as much as I would want my own. So, you know, it's, it's good to be part of that community. Yeah. It is good, man. It is. I just want to give a shout out real quick to two people, the woodboarding warrior. What's going on? How you doing? Um, she said hi earlier. She was the oh, one She stuck with us nice. when we, we flipped and uh, flopped. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then also want to say uh, hi to Ann real quick. Um, hey, and, and and the woodworking what you said wood burning wood, wood burning, burning warrior. warrior yeah yeah I love some biography yeah. like it's it, that that's something else that's also getting pushed to a whole another level yeah um, sorry I'm just looking at no, the, no, you're the you check out yeah. you check out the comments no you're and, good you're good yeah. um yeah no the, uh, the, there I, I don't know about Ann I know the it just happened wood burning warrior she's she's local oh yeah, yeah she's, okay she's, awesome. She's, uh, awesome she's not far from us. And um, yeah, definitely. She's she's awesome. I love to see Ann here as well. So that's always cool. Um, if if you guys have questions, you know, go ahead and submit them. We're talking with Chad from Scarfish Glass. Um, we're got you know he's a mixed media sculptor. Um, he he works a nine to five now, but it's he's done he's he's worked at a lot of museums building the uh, more than one multiple museums mm -hmm. yeah. building the displays for like if they, they have a special exhibit that's coming he'll he'll set it all up so he builds the structural stuff and then he also makes it look aesthetically pleasing hopefully yeah. hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah I'd say you've done but, a good job with yeah. a lot of it man yeah and it's fun even my job now is still exhibits uh, it's just in an interest it's in a different setting. So, yeah. So now, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 And from Warsaw, Missouri. Uh, awesome. Well, awesome, man. We, we love hearing that. Love hearing. Thanks for coming back again. Um, I, I'm asking Chad a few questions. This is, an, this is an interesting one right here. So let's say there's someone out there that says, I want to be that big name artist. And I want to, I want to build like only like $10,000, $20,000 pieces and just sell those. Uh, how, how, how is that possible? I've, I've yet to crack the code on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so with art, you, I think the hard part is, is, is I'm sports, right? So you have people that are like, that love sports and they want to be professional. I don't know. I like playing soccer. I enjoy the game. I like running around on the field, kicking a ball and some camaraderie, you know, like it, it comes down to surfers, like soul surfing versus like just always doing competitions. There's, there's that drive, um, for, for being a competitive person. And then there also becomes this whole issue of perceived value and actual value. And that's a fine line. So you'll find that artists will, um, in the beginning, tend to invest a ton of time and get paid pennies for their pieces just because of the amount of energy that they might invest. And then with time, they can see that they can kind of raise the bar a little bit. And hopefully with that also, their their abilities and their overall finished product is better as well. But then you start getting into building a name for yourself. So what is it that you're selling? Are you selling your art as a piece of art or are you selling your art with a name engraved on the bottom of it? And um, that becomes that fine line where people start actually buying what you're creating based on name, not necessarily because of aesthetics. And they might still like the way it looks. They might still like what they're getting, but you're, they're, they're making an investment in you too. And that's the thing that a lot of artists need to recognize is that if somebody's willing to spend this much money on something that you're creating, they're, they're putting money into you. They're investing in you. They're hoping um, they might also just love the piece and they, no matter what they would have gotten the piece, but then sometimes it's because because they're hoping that that, that trend's going to continue. And so as a, as a big time um, artist that I am not, I can, <laughs> I can only imagine yeah, <laughs> that, that those guys, yeah, they, they, they realize that uh, there's a lot to be said in their name 
And um, yeah, hopefully that can continues for them. And then maybe at some point before I kick off this, this, you know, this great earth, um, I might be the same. I don't know. No, uh, yeah. you're, you're, I think you're going to do it again, man. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. I, I think about it. Uh, it's almost like, so there's those people that are ultra competitive and they get better because, because of the competition. Yeah. And then there are those people that, man, they, they can just, they can just, it's, it seems that they just, they have their own way and their own path in life and they just do their own thing. And, you know, and, and made a good point. She said, art is subjective. You never know what people uh, will like in any given moment. And I think sometimes people just, and some of it's luck, some of it's passion because yeah. without passion, you're not going to get there. But some of it's just dumb luck. If whatever yeah, your agreed. vision you have, and you're just following that vision and it kind of crosses with, with someone likes it and then someone else likes it. And then, you, yeah, your, your, your art plays into, it could play into what is current. It, I mean, a big part of it, the aesthetic might be what, what is, what's, what people like. And it's not that you're necessarily catering to, to that idea. Um, so much as just that's your aesthetic timed up well with what other people are, are into. And so um, that can work out real well in some people's, you know, advantage. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's very interesting. Yeah. But then there's some people that are like Pele's. You know what I mean? Like oh, the sure. There's just yeah. like yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, this is a, an interesting story. Is that I used to. This is again back in the I guess mid '90s. I was taking drawing classes um, at our local community college, TCC, and I had an instructor, Rob Hawks, and uh, Rob. Man, I love that man. Just like just uncontrollably love that man. Just just as sweet and nice as he could be. And he used to say he would get so mad when people would tell him that he was talented. And the term talent, what he would say is that term talent robs an artist of all of the hours that they have invested. Because it just makes it neutral. Like you say, oh, you're such a talented person. Well, that means that, well, that just came naturally to you. And the reality is, is that there's, there's hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of hours in developing your craft and practicing painting, drawing, working with your materials um, versus just like, well, man, that guy's just really super talented. Look yeah. at that. It, he, I bet the first time you ever touched that tool, it was just a, a divine moment. And the reality <laughs> is not so much. Yeah, I've made a lot of horrible things <laughs> in my life that are just, you know, that, that now looking back in retrospect, they were steps and, and I can, you know, still happy i made them because it took me to the to another place but but man it doesn't it it doesn't matter if it's pretty or not what's important is that you're making something you're doing something and it's yours and you're going to learn from that you know yeah absolutely yeah. um absolutely i'm just gonna uh comment on our, our, our next few comments over here uh, Anne said, hence why all artists are struggling until they're older dead. Correct. Yes. Amen, Anne. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The yeah. starving artist is not a... Yeah, uh, it's, it's not just for the young yeah, artists yeah, at no, all. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. And that's but, if you get discovered by the time you get old. But yeah, yeah that's that's true. It is. Woodburning yeah. Warrior said, I definitely am on my own path and ignore the individual. And... If you're being anything other than yourself, I don't want to say you're a sellout, but you're yeah. pandering to other people. If, yeah. When you pander to other people, you're not being true to yourself. Being true to yourself is, is yeah. one of the most important things. It is. Now, you, you will have to, like, every now and then you got to sacrifice your soul a little <laughs> bit. I mean, I'm just, just saying. Every now and then you got, you got to give a little bit. Because, yeah, you're going you're gonna to get, you're going you're gonna to find yourself doing things that, like, you know, you might not necessarily want to do, but it's a job and don't look at it as being beneath you either. Okay. Until you hit that, 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 yeah, yeah that upper level. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work so. to get there. I don't think people realize that. Like, um, the, the, um, you taught me this, you taught me about the, 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 uh, the model of having an art sale. So if you, oh, yeah. art show, so if you go to an art show and you have a booth set up, you have a bunch of p small pieces that are like, $20 each or under yeah. $20. Then in the middle, you have stuff that's maybe like 50, 100, 200. Then you have your show pieces. Yeah. You have like a few show pieces. And that's, that's what the, that's what you get judged on when the judges Correct. come around. Right. Yeah. You got, you've got to have like, yeah. you, you realize they're probably not going to sell. Yeah. Um, and, and that's fine because they're, they might get you a ribbon. They might get you an yeah. award prize, you know, or they just catch the eye of people walking by. 
Like it, the, you know, you, you know, if you have a big piece, you know, it, it's there, it creates a draw, it gets people in the booth and they, most people are going to go, I can't buy that. But I mean, this $20 item, $30 item, $40 item, you know, you'll, you'll, you can sell those all day, maybe not all day long, but yeah, but you can keep them going. So, yeah. yeah. No, those, yeah, those, man, I remember the first time I was at, uh, I forget what art show it was. I think it was in Portsmouth. Seawall. No, it wasn't Port. So, it was a seawall. It was uh, the Mother's Day one. Port, um, oh my yeah. goodness, Gosport. Gosport yeah, Arts Festival. Oh, yeah, I love that show. And um, yeah. I remember the. Fr yeah. uh, I was there. It was. It was like this was the first time I ever remember. People were lined up, lined up at my booth to buy stuff. I mean, they were waiting one after another after another, waiting in line just just to get rung up. It's just such a good feeling. And it was yeah. all those $20 items. They, yep. those, yeah. those easily paid for paid for the booth itself and probably more there. Yeah. And um, the other one I remember is I remember, you've, you've probably, you've done way more art shows than me, but I remember a woman just walking up, looking inside my art show and saying, I want that. And just like she walked and stopped, <laughs> something caught her eye and she said, I want that. And that was like, absolutely, you can get that. Yeah, that is yours. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. And I kind of wish, I, I, I don't want to say I kind of wish it was it was marked up higher. I marked it what I thought was appropriate. And I might have undermarked it, but um, she probably would have paid three times as much. But yeah. that's not the point of that. The point is she walked away with a piece that she felt really good about buying. Yes, she was absolutely. very excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then sometimes you have those pieces that like you just finished the night before, like the metal <laughs> might even still be hot when you're carrying it to the show. And it's like the first thing that sells and you're like, I didn't even get to enjoy that. Piece. <laughs> like, I wanted that to like, I wanted that to sit, sit in my, you know, sit in my living room for, you know, maybe a month or so before I get rid of it. Sometimes you, you get really attached to your art and it's oftentimes the one that you recognize that you like it so much. And then, so somebody else might also do the same thing and, yeah, but there it goes in somebody else's house. Yeah. You yeah, have a piece that's been sitting in my dining room for probably nine years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. like, uh, I I mean, I, if I go to shows again, maybe I'll do it. But yeah, it's kind of yeah. funny. Yeah. I mean, you still have a lot of your big pieces? I still have a ton of my big pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I, I, I'm not going to say that I quit, quit cold turkey, but I mean, I came to a real, uh, I came to a slow roll um, shortly after my child was born and just realized like, the focus on life needs to be needs to be raising my kid and so you know um even when she was young i would still go in the shop and work you know till 11 12 one o'clock two o'clock in the morning and um now i'm not doing that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know if you go to work all day and then go to the shop and work most of the night and yeah. get a couple hours and 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 roll on to the next day and um yeah, probably not the healthiest way to, to live at that point. It would have been caffeine and nicotine to get me through, and I'm glad I've actually gotten rid of both of those in my life. <laughs> so I go to bed a lot earlier. Um, yeah, but, yeah. All right. So, I, someone's, I got, let's say someone said, I've got a, a couple of pieces, I've done a couple of pieces of art. How do I get my own exhibit at a, at a museum? Ah, okay. Well, you're going to need to develop a body of work <laughs> and then you're going to have to do an entire presentation. A lot of museums, if you're trying to get into a gallery show instead of just like a single piece, if you're trying to do a gallery show, you have to submit a plan. I mean, a full drawn up plan. You need to know what the layout is of that museum. You need to have uh, sketches, renderings. Um, have to be submitted. And um, talking about, you know, a large gallery show, we're not, I mean, if guilds have shows all the time and you can put just about any piece that you create in those guild shows and you'll get a pedestal and your name will be on it and you can, you can it's a feather in your hat and you can put it, you know, you can put it on your resume. Um, but for a large scale exhibit, understand this, if you ever decide that you want to do a large scale exhibit, it is going to suck the life out of you for several months. Like the last big gallery show I did, um, and I took up two large, ga two large gallery rooms and then a long hallway, and I didn't take a day off for probably six months straight. And again, every night, every night for six, like I'm saying, I didn't take a day. I'm not talking weekends. I'm talking there was not a day off for six months straight. And um, my, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was incredibly supportive, and man, God bless her soul. Like, I mean, just, I don't, she hung in there. Uh, I, I mean, and, she, and I think she was happy and proud of the end result, and 
Um, but it was, it was a lot of work and she'd be the first person to tell you that like, it's, it's not, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to do, but, um, but it does feel really, really good. I will say like stepping back and standing in a room and the room is entirely what you have created yourself. It, it's a, it is, and it's, I'm not going to say it's, it's healthy for the ego. It doesn't necessarily, you know, might inflate your ego depending on the person, but it's healthy. It gives you, it gives you a sense of accomplishment and, um, it also gives you perspective. Like you go all of a sudden, uh, proportions, like you're thinking I'm, I make something that's this big and this is where you, and you make these pieces over and over and over again. And you don't think in terms of like, if I make a thousand of these pieces, I can fill an entire room with this, you know? And all of a sudden this one piece becomes, you know, becomes, becomes a, a 2000 square foot, um, exhibit space and, and it feels, it feels good, you know? So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I do remember going to uh, uh, your exhibit at, up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great, man. All right. So if someone says I like art and I want to try making it, but I'm afraid I won't be any good, please advise me on what to do. Uh -oh. um, wow, that's a that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? I don't know. I mean, so advise you on what to do to be an artist. Um, well, for starters, right there, we're going to go with practice, practice, practice. Like, it's just, you don't have another option. Um, but to be good at being an artist, it's going to take some self-doubt. I mean, the, the, the question is posed in a sense of self-doubt, and I think that's legitimate. I think that that's, I think all artists, um, to some degree, struggle with the idea of make it or break it, failure. Um, how do people respond to my art um or i get it do they get it you know and that's that's another toughie um, for myself i've never been an artist that had to create something to work through some sort of personal trauma or mental issue or really to be ultra expressive in some way i generally would make art because i just like making art i just enjoy making things so i get an idea in my head i draw lines out i lay a bunch of i'll grab a bunch of wood and see which way the 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 grains are moving and and kind of chip away from there it's not i'm not working through any sort of personal issues but um but if you do that's great i mean if it's cathartic that's awesome um yeah yeah but i, I mean i would just have to say you know start small um i mean you can do small gallery shows you can i mean shoot uh, i guess one of the best things to do would be if you go to a museum go to go to the go to the um the gift shop you know um, find out what it is that you're really interested in selling and see if there's, if there's a particular genre or if there's a, you know, so say, say you like motorcycles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, try your best to cater that to that base. Yes. Like you can, you can yeah. reach out to that base. And so, um, it, it's either gonna be something you enjoy right off the bat because you're sharing in your passion. So you've got two, you've got two checks right there. It's like, yeah, you're excited about what you're creating. And you're also excited about how the people in your community are reacting to that. Like, I think, I think that becomes a really nice, a nice tool. So, you know, you, you, to be an artist, you don't necessarily have to, to be a, an artist. So to say, like, you're not doing art shows, art galleries, you can be an artist within your own community. You think about like all the pinstripers that are out there. So if you're talking like old hot rods, if you're talking, I mean, you know, you're getting into like, the guys that do pinstriping work, uh, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to end up in a gallery because it doesn't cater to that. But man, if you see you see a nice ride going down the street and it's got beautiful pinstriping and just just custom just the custom paint jobs that are out there and patinas that people can come up with, just making something making something look old, making something look like something it's not. I, there's a, there's such a beautiful art in that too. You know, so it's it's not necessarily based on the art the art world, so to say. You know, find 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 your uh, find your village. You know, find your find your group and stay with them. You know, a lot of times they'll appreciate you more than 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 other people will. You know, so that's awesome, man. That's a very awesome way to put it. Um, you talk about like things like you said. Let's say you like motorcycles. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. Part of part of the whole leather craft that I everyone knows I was a woodworker for years and years, even, even though you never see me make a single woodworking piece on, on the entire channel yet. Um, 
I, I got into leather working um, through being around motorcycles a lot and different mm-hmm. things from motorcycles. They take leather and, um, you know, it, 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 that culture uh, of its own has, has its own things. And, it, you know, I've mentioned before, I think uh, Wood Burning War, you asked me about tooling and I said, yeah, you know what? Tooling is very interesting. Like, you've, you've, you yeah. know, I'm talking about yeah, tooling. Well, sure. Um, I can't stand mm-hmm. the Western tooling. And it's 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 not like I can't stand it. It's like it, it never really it never really appealed to me and drew it in. And most of most of the the patterns that you can get out there are are around around the the Western style. I've I've done some some hand carving and hand tooling, and it, it was on stuff like skulls and you know yeah. crazy stuff yeah. like that. And it's it's kind of funny at all. It's, that's kind of what like motorcycle people look it like. Fl- it, stuff flows, like there. it flows right into your yeah. into your into your village. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So that way you're, you know, you're doing what you like to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. I have a challenge for you, Chad. Uh oh. All right. This is making me nervous. No, yeah. don't. It's, it okay. should not make you nervous. Okay. It, this is for everyone out there. The the if they've ever felt any type of hang up, and you are a phenomenal artist. I don't want you. I, you saying that you're not an artist anymore, or not professional artist. Not a professional yeah. artist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're a tremendous artist. And uh, I'm going to put you to the test, but I don't want you to feel like I'm putting you to the test to try to yeah, to yeah. try to prove yourself. What I'm what I'm what I'm doing is I'm proving something about art to everyone that's out there. So, okay, you ready for this? Um, I, I, yeah, I guess so. Let me get a a, a board. <laughs> let me see. I, All right. I don't know. All right, Chad Sharpie. Uh, All right, uh, I'm getting a fat head sharpie. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you a thinner head if I can you, find you got, one. You got some crayons. How yeah. about you got some Crayolas? Like, you got some Crayolas. Yeah, I like putting it. I'm putting it on wax. Oh, oh. I don't have, I don't have a thinner one. We, we use this. It's gonna be okay, man. <laughs> it's gonna be our surface for you to do this on. Ah, I her in a piece of paper. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily my favorite thing. I want you to read. This right here. What does that say, Chad? It, said, it says that you're a professional artist. Draw me a circle. Yes. Because everyone says, where am I at? Well, I I can't everyone even, says, uh, I'm no artist. I can't even draw a circle. I can't. I mean, man, okay. drawing a circle is hard. So, so draw me a circle real quick. Draw me a circle. Yeah. Can I, I, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm, I'm going to hold it so, like, to the camera here. Oh, see, this you isn't. Can, you, but see, this isn't any fun. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the, the way I draw a circle is I lock my arm in place and I rotate the object. Oh no, you can't do that, man. That's cheating. That's not, <laughs> that's how I draw a circle. That's how I draw a circle. <laughs> you want to? You want to try that? All right. I'll right, tell you what. You right, try right. it this way. No, 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 no. We'll try. We'll, your do way. It, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. Can I draw anything in the circle beforehand? Sure. Go ahead. All draw right. something I'm in the circle. I'm gonna I'm I'm use the the fine point end. I'm gonna okay. put myself a little dot. Right? Okay. Put myself a little dot. I'm gonna start out over here. Start out over here. So I'm doing here. I'm gonna start out right there. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna... now you guys notice he's doing short lines, short lines. I am. I am. I'm a short line. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not getting my circle right. I'm not getting my circle right. So, but I am trying to like just just judge by where my, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just, I, I gotta here. change my position. Ah, see, that's what I'm saying. You gotta rotate the board. Because if you can lock your hand in place, <laughs> you lock your hand in place, then you're just making the same motion. But if like you're trying to actually like sit there and be like, I'm gonna draw a perfect circle. Yeah. That's what your circle yes, always looks yes, like. Yes. It's all like Charlie Brown. <laughs> so like, but it's all right, we do want Charlie Brown. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna sketch it out. It's tempting. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I did that I, I did that to prove a point to everyone. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah, that I can't draw a circle. <laughs> you can't draw a circle. I can't draw yeah. a circle either. You, yeah. And you do what I do. You do the short little lines. Yeah, I do short little lines. That's all I lay up. Yeah. No, I don't know of a single person. Um, I mean, there's the, it's just, there's probably a pinstriper might be able to do it. I bet. I bet there's. Yeah. A, I bet there's yeah. a skill set yeah. out there, there where is. where they've done. A, a, yeah, where they've <laughs> sat there and drawn ten thousand circles, and they're like, "I got this. Not yeah. a problem." Yeah. yeah. So. Or they could just have a talent for circles. <laughs> That's for you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the idea that that you have to be able to draw a circle, um, um, that, that's that's totally that, that that's that's such a misnomer as to what an artist actually is. The artist is they see a vision, they 
design something based on that vision, even if that vision is a set of plans that you purchased on online or, yeah. or um, for instance, one of my, my free leather working templates, if you're a member of my newsletter, I had to plug that in there, yeah. sorry. No, 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 go for it, go for it. Um, but if you're seeing a vision, even if it's something that's already done and you're copying it, and that's, that's, that's how you get better is by copying something. Um, that's true. That's, and it's a matter of perspective too, learning techniques. So Chad did the little one technique. Yeah. That's what I do too. <laughs> he had, he had his dots. He got his perspective he gave, on. He gave me a point to go to. Yeah. yeah. So, um. I'm still way off. Yeah. 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 No, you're fine, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but <laughs> absolutely. So I don't want, I don't want anyone to, to get caught up in there thinking that Whatever it is, what it, you think it's something you can't do because wh whether it's woodworking or leatherworking or glasswork or metalwork, excuse me, you're only you're only handicapped as an artist. You're only handicapped by your mind and and, and your perspective. And if your perspective is I can't do it, you're never going to be able to do it. Yeah. If your perspective is I'm going to try it, there's nothing wrong with that at all because you're 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 stiff you're sticking your toe in your water at that point. Yeah. You gotta you gotta give it a go. Yeah. 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 Don't be afraid to try something. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I can give you a prime example. I became obsessed with metal spinning. Um, if anybody ever wants to see something really, really unique, look up metal spinning and the way that you can shape a flat piece of uh, of sheet metal. And um, I am by no means a metal spinner or good at it. I enjoy I obsessed over making all the tools. I obsessed over watching videos, and then once I tried it, I was like, man, this is kind of scary. <laughs> I was like, this is a flying disc that's getting ready to shear off, and, and, and yeah. Yeah, because I can imagine if you, if, if for some reason, if you got it so thin to where it broke apart, and yeah. Yeah, it's a spinning yeah. piece of metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's rotating. You're trying to drive it back over a form, yeah. Yeah. you know, but same thing. You go get, you get some hard maple, you turn your forms, you know, and you just practice. And, I mean, I, can, I feel comfortable with it now. But I remember like the build up to trying it. I was I was scared. I mean, I really was. I mean, yeah. I hadn't taken a class in it. I, it was just books and um, and videos and and going from there. And then just yeah, same thing. Obsessed over making all the right tools and then actually trying it. I was so nervous. So yeah, yeah. it's there's it's it's tough, man. I mean, like as a kid, I remember you're you're limited. You're limited by by your perception you're limited by your your desire to try it and um, you're going to be limited by your your resources as well i mean correct you can start with a pen and paper and either draw or write something and writing is an art by the way it is storytelling yeah. is an art there's it, oh, yeah. certainly is. yeah yeah um yeah you, you you could start there you could you could do other things if there's someone out here that's listening that's seven years old which i seriously doubt but yeah you you can start doing art with with you could start there by either writing or drawing and, and it's it's an exercise in imagination it's an exercise in perspective and i think there's we didn't have the internet when we were kids no, no but i mean like i would say paper airplanes yeah i mean honestly i'm I, again i'm not a fl I, I enjoy drawing i enjoy painting but i like i, I like sculpting i like creating something that's that's three-dimensional so origami and origami yeah. as a kid i was obsessed yeah. over paper airplanes yeah. i mean i can look back to just yeah. but you're same thing you're like thinking function but you're also thinking form you're like is it symmetrical it's like you would try to make something that you know so you, even something as simple as getting your kids folding paper airplanes and trying to come up with something interesting there you're getting the synapse firing you're getting their brains thinking about your get up form function you know, movement, it's interactive, it's, you know, it's something fun to do. So on, on some level, it's still a form of art. It so, is. Yeah, or craftsmanship, however yes. you want to look at it, because you could have a, a very well high-crafted piece of um, paper that you can send <laughs> soaring through the air and dent the end of it. And Yeah. Did you... Uh did you make the, what was it, the crane? Did you make the paper crane? I wasn't an origami person. Oh, you weren't? No, I'm no, not an origami. You were an airplane person. I was an airplane person. I was busy making, like, slingshots and, and, and <laughs> like, I would make darts out of rolled up paper and rubber bands. And, yeah, oh, that's and awesome. So that, that was oh, it. yeah, I remember I, doing that. Yeah. 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 Sit there and, yeah. Yeah. Still some wooden uh, clothespins and, yeah, go yeah. at it. So I remember I made uh, the crane and the frog were my two favorites, and they're the same basis with origami. 
And the, uh, and the teacher was like so impressed that I knew how to make a crane. And I, I, I forget where I learned it in a book or yeah. something or someone taught me. She's like, you're going to teach all these kids how to make it. <laughs> and we're going to make it on the Christmas tree. Pressure's on. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. Um, as long as yours is the best crane, right? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can't. At that point, you <laughs> yeah, cannot yeah, have yeah, the worst. Ga games there are is on. pressure. There yeah, is pressure. Yeah, there is. Especially yeah. for a kid. Man, that's yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, you yeah. know, I had some, when I was a kid, I had some interesting things that were, um, beyond be, being creative, just in general, beyond building stuff, because I actually, um, I, I will talk about it in a minute, but I ran across my first ever woodworking project as a kid, um, here recently. But, um, I, I remember I had a teacher one time came to me and was like, um, I, we're going to put a play on and I'm like, okay. And then she's like, you're going to direct it. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, Nine uh, years old. I didn't know what. Wow. It, I didn't yeah. know what it was. And then yeah. the funny thing was, so like, I wanted to get my buddy to be in the play, and he's like, "Man, I don't want to do that." And I'm like, "Come on, man, you gotta be like the starring roller." I don't want to do that. And I was like, "How do I do that?" He's like, "If you get Shannon to be in it." Oh. He's like, "If you get Shannon to be opposite me, it was oh. like the the other like the love interest it or whatever. All, all I'll do down. it." Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Oh crap! Now I gotta get Shannon." So like, yeah. it's it funny. <laughs> it, it was more putting that together. <laughs> So now I know how, like, a Hollywood producer on a small scale yeah, feels. Yeah, this is, this is it. There's yeah, a lot of pressure. You have to get so-and-so yeah. into play. You have to get so-and-so in this movie. And if you get them in this movie, I'll do it. And I'm like, man. Um, but uh, sounds, sounds wrong. Sounds <laughs> so wrong on so many levels. But, yeah. No, but I, I yeah, recently ran across my first ever woodworking project. When I was in Cub Scouts, we, uh, we went there in those little, the little pins, and one of them was, like, the woodworking pen or something like that, the craftsman pen. Yeah. And we built like these stools. So my dad was, oh, that's was cool. like, he was not our like head scout master. He was like head of like our level. And, yeah. um, he came up with a way to take a, uh, one by six and cut it in such a way that we can make these stools. And, and like, we learned like structurally why we're, we're making certain things. So you have the stool and then you have the legs and then you have stretchers along the side yeah. to keep the stretchers from yeah, bending yeah. out. And, uh, so, you know, learned about that. We had to build a bridge at, and my dad helped me build a bridge out of balsa wood. He knew all that stuff. He was an engineer. That's so funny. Cause now I'm thinking about all the little projects, yeah. like the Parthodon. I remember I was in elementary school yeah. and we're like, yeah, just cutting wooden dowels and making a roof or whatever. Wow. But yeah. But still, you're just like, it's not, ex you know? Yeah. But you're right. It's, yeah. it's those early introductions that, yeah. 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 I, I, I was very fortunate to have parents that, that and my dad will, will not consider himself a, um, a, a he, he will say he has no artistic ability whatsoever. But then at the same time, when it was time for the school projects, he was the one that was helping me out. And he came up with some crazy ideas mm -hmm. to do some stuff. Yeah. We took like, uh, what, what's this, the, the rods you have in welding, like welding sticks or welding rods? Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. you got your welding rods. We took yeah. those and made like, uh, I think we were studying something with Native Americans. We made like, took those and then we took uh, the paper off of a paper bag from like grocery yeah. bag yeah. and made like teepees out of them. See, yeah, that's stuff perfect. like that. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it yeah. was, yeah. Good use of materials. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he always found, found a way awesome. to do something. But uh, there's, there's a, an artistic way of doing that as well. Anytime you're building anything, like mm -hmm. using materials that are just abnormal f or, or, you know, using what you have around the house. I totally get that. Yeah, there's been some last minute like school projects where it's like, all right, let's, let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your daughter, you were helping her do a school project last week, right? I try to help her every, I mean, she's, oh man, she's got my heart. Um, <laughs> she's just a super great kid. But yeah, I mean, we're yeah. always doing, we, yeah. You do you find stuff around the house, or do you go out and buy stuff? No, no, physically? no. We'll try. We'll, we'll try to use stuff that's around the around the house. She's fortunate that she lives in a house that has a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's usually something there. Too, Another uh, wooden glass, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, who knows, man? They could. Yeah. We. I mean, I. Yeah. I'm not a pack rat necessarily, but. Yeah. Yeah. But but I am a materials guy. Like I will hold on to some stuff. Uh yeah. going like that's gonna have a purpose someday. Yeah. So whether it's I put it to use or my kid puts it to use, it still has a use. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So well does anyone have any questions out there? Let me let me reach back out there. I signed up for my very okay, hold on back up a little bit. I'm gonna say I mainly do okay. And Jay says I signed up for my very first Renaissance fair as a vendor. Oh, that's awesome. That will be the real test of selling my goods. Do <laughs> you have any, uh, not that not that you're asking oh. for it, Ian, not that you're asking for it, but if someone were, 
let's just say someone uh, were set, they they finally signed up for a Renaissance fair or a craft show or an art show. What advice would you have for them? I mean, I love Renaissance fairs. I think they're fun. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been to one in years, but I used to love going. I mean, sometimes just for the turkey leg, but I, mean, I definitely <laughs> like, I just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, just be yourself. I mean, I think that's it. I mean, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to have your product. So whatever it is that you're producing, think in terms of obviously w- what your audience is, you know, what it is that they might be interested in, in, in buying. And then just be yourself. Uh, I would, don't be pretentious. Just just go into it. And um, obviously, it's a, that's a that's a fun environment. Like people yeah. are they're 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 coming there to have a good time. So right there, the mentality of the people that are around you, hopefully, um, is pretty jovial and just a good time. So I mean, yeah, I would say in that situation, there's no putting on airs. You know, you're just you're just you're going into it and having a good time and. You've produced, you've produced your items. You can't change what you're going to make. You're already there. So, um, and then learn from that. Like, well, obviously what sells, sells, and then make more of that. And what doesn't sell, you know, hold on to it and try to sell it the next time. But that doesn't mean you have to make a lot more of it. I've definitely been down that road. I mean, I've, I, I mean, I guarantee you, I still have pieces of glass that I'll, I'll try to sell at an art show knowing that like, I don't like it. I might've made it 20 years ago, <laughs> but somebody might 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 go for it but i'm probably not going to make it again you know yeah so. yeah we have a closet upstairs that's half filled with all my stuff from mm-hmm. when i was going doing woodworking and yeah um it's funny um i said that you said all that stuff and we talked about the whole renaissance fair yeah and uh the wood burning warrior said well definitely dress up yeah <laughs> the renaissance yeah fair. no doubt i mean yeah. be, being that I was I was cut from the cloth of garb for six years at Jamestown, <laughs> I'm like I'm right there with you. I have no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's funny because you think that people would use an English accent, but the German they were actually German and Polish glass blowers. So oh, were they really? Yeah, Vard glass. Vard glass. They were not English. Yeah, they, they they were hired to come over by the Virginia Company of London. But I'm wow. not going to go into that. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Go, yeah. go check out Colonial Jamestown. Go, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. So, yeah. great glass blowers. I mean, really, just some of the most efficient glass blowers you will ever get the chance to see. And that is that is that it's the honest truth. I mean, their their proficiency with production, um, they they don't waste any heat, and it's just it's absolutely it's a it's it was a beautiful way to learn. I wouldn't have picked a different uh, path. So, so the and uh, and said. Uh, sewing the costume in between making leather goods. Great. Wood burning warrior. Cool. I'm doing a pirate invasion in Yorktown. So I already have my uh, pirate outfit <laughs> gathered from the thrift star. store. Did yeah. you ever make your eye patch? I, you were asking me about an eye patch. I should I should do a quickie on that real uh, on on how to uh, on what my take would be if you if you haven't made one yet because um, that is something that that would be cool and uh, you know a, a, a eye patch would be something real easy to make that that I think people would like i feel like i should put him on the spot and make a big eye patch but yeah yeah let's see it doesn't she didn't say yet no um yes she's oh no she's they're talking they're talking about glass blowing factory in germany that's where the wood burning warrior went Mm -hmm. um maybe i should do the eye patch i don't know um i I figured i feel feel it'd be somewhat you know you know what i think um Wood burning warrior. I think that if, if you found a simple way to make it, and I and I have an idea on what would be a simple way to make it, um, you would probably sell a ton of them at a pirate convention. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you could figure out, and and uh, I can I can make I could see if I can make you a pattern, and then we come up with this method of making them, and you could probably that could be your under t- probably even under ten dollar items. So like people come up and they got three kids. And one kid wants an eye patch. Guess what? You've sold three eye patches now. <laughs> and nothing says an eye patch has to be all leather. No. I mean, you could make a wooden flap with a leather strap, yeah. and then you could whatever. I mean, break out some biography on that stuff and like, oh, yeah. have some fun. I mean, can you imagine kids running around with like little wooden eye patches? That who oh, knows yeah, what you could cool. come up with? I cool. mean, really. I, I mean, there again, it's just like it's it, you can reach across different materials, you know, yeah. and people will love it. I yeah. mean, that's a unique item. All of yeah. a sudden, you've got this wooden eye patch with a leather strap. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the pirate, the pirate convention, the, the Blackbeard Festival is, is. I'm guessing that's what you're talking about, Ann. I, I'm not sure. I mean, oh man, wood burning warrior. 
I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. But uh, yeah, that thing's awesome. I remember going there as an adult with my nephew. My nephew was probably like six years old. And my parents are always everywhere early. Like, you know, if, if the store opens at, at 8 o'clock, they were there at, at 745. <laughs> so um, we we went to the pirate convention early. It was the Blackbeard Festival. And we went in the elevator with my little nephew, my sister, it was my parents and I. And I remember uh, all of a sudden someone's running for the elevator. And it, it was Blackbeard yeah. <laughs> was running for the elevator. Blackbeard, Blackbeard's here coming to like, work. And he's like, hold the elevator, hold the, hold the elevator. And we opened up the elevator. And my nephew was like, oh, it's Blackbeard, no. <laughs> so he's like, oh. That's kind of funny. Old teach. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. The pirate invasion is actually New York Town, New York Town Beach. One of the last weekends of April. Oh, I found a pattern, but I had to modify it. Yeah. Would you, yeah, I just have to get some light. So, yeah, the... I did not know that. The pirate invasion is in Yorktown on Yorktown Beach. Now I'm gonna have to check yeah. it out. Yeah. That'd be something that'd be something cool to come check out. Definitely. Because I know the the black have you ever been to Blackbeard Festival? I have. That one's in Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. has an yeah. amazing like uh, like art section to it. Is is there an art show? Is that a there juried is, art show? Yeah, it's a juried art show. Okay. So you can you can get a ten by ten space and, and sell your wares. Wow. And, yeah. Oh wow. So I'm coming for a wooden eye patch. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm, or I'm thinking about like a hinged one. Like a, a hinged one? This is, I'm, this is it's, I don't know. It's in my head now. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like literally like a little profiled wooden shape with like a little small hinge. And, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That would be this awesome. Is, this is what happens. So, yeah, you yeah. start thinking about something and then you can't stop until you make it. <laughs> that is, that so. is 100% true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's funny. Well, we've been on for like an, I want to say an hour and a half. Is that oh. is that right, guys? It hasn't even felt like it. I'm gonna. Oh no, it's it's about an hour so far. Because uh, okay. we probably were screwing around. Try, I was screwing around trying to yeah. how to make the video. And uh, I apologize, guys. Are we are we straight up and down now? Yeah, we okay, we're straight up and down. All right, I mean, awesome. I kind of wanted it tilted the other way. I mean, I, I like you, Chad. There's nothing yeah. wrong with you. It's like I don't mind yeah. being next yeah. to you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it it it, it would have been. Probably, I'm, I'm going to figure out a way. I'm, I'm going to figure out what the problem is. See, guys, here's the problem. I have to figure out how to make it happen when I'm getting ready to go live. Not like let's test it out because if I'm testing it out, it's going to actually go live. So if you guys ever see me go live and I'm like eating dinner or something like a, like a big mouthful of food, eating a sandwich, or maybe like I don't know what else I would be doing. I wouldn't do it when I was like. On, in the bathroom or something no, like I that, would, but uh, I yeah, I would, yeah, I would, I would, you know, maybe I'll just try going live on my shop a couple of times and working on stuff. I just don't know. I don't. I know that I, I don't know that people would find that interesting. Um, but uh, the hopes is to make this a podcast. Um, possibly, you know, Chad. Chad's gonna do it with me some more. Yeah, and um, yeah, this has been fun. This yeah. has been an interesting experience. So. Yeah. yeah, and I like hanging out with Joe. Yeah, so yeah, Chad's yeah. all right, guy. But yeah. he's he actually he so he grew up in my neighborhood. And um, I didn't know this when I bought a house here. And you, well, you weren't living here at the time when I bought the house no, here. No. But then he bought a house here. So then I'd go down to his shop and hang out. He'd come down to my shop and hang out. And we'd just shoot the breeze for I don't know, hours. Hours. Sometimes yeah. hours. Yeah. 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 So, um, oh, is the, Ian's saying thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, man. Yeah, no, no, you're good. You're yeah. Good. Um, we were going to say, which is? Oh, a good thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Um, we will be back another time. I'm I, I'm gonna try to play around with some different times and find out what works the best. Uh, we tried nine o'clock last time. This time we're trying. Uh, we tried eight o'clock. Tried to move it up a little earlier, which actually probably feels like seven because today was our hopefully our last ever time change. Mm -hmm. um, so, but uh, we'll see you guys next time. And until then, you know, don't. Just go out and make something. Get get Amen. take your take your yeah. phone with you. Listen listen to music. Listen to podcasts. Listen to audibles. Whatever you want to listen to. But get in your shop and make something. All right, guys. Take care. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's a good time. It was. It's fun. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, I man. It was pretty.